Let's see how we can use Carnot maps to simplify Boolean expressions. Here's a complex expression that we want to simplify. Before we start, let's put brackets around groups of variables which have been anded together. This will make it easier to deal with. We're going to need a Carnot map with three variables, because there are three variables in the expression. And now we're going to take each group of variables that have been anded together and deal with them separately, beginning with not A and B. These ones represent the value not A. You can see wherever there's a 1, input A is 0. But we're interested in not A and B. Of these four ones, only these two satisfy that criteria. You can see that wherever there's a 1 here, input A is 0 and input B is 1. Let's put these two ones aside for a moment and move on to the next part of the expression. We want B and not C. Well, these ones represent B, but only this pair of ones satisfy the criteria B and not C. You can see that wherever there's a 1, input B is 1, but also input C is 0. So let's put these two ones aside now and move on to the next part of the expression, B and C. Well, these four ones represent B. You can see wherever there's a 1, input B is 1. But of those four ones, only this pair satisfy input B is 1 and input C is 1. So here these two ones represent B and C. Let's put those aside for now and look at the final part of the expression. This group of ones represents A. You can see wherever there's a 1, the value of input A is 1. But of these four ones, only this pair represent A and not B. Notice that for this pair, the value of input B is 0. And of these two, only this one represents A and not B and not C. You can see that the value of input C is 0. We now have all of our ones in place. Our Carnot map is complete. As you can see, there are two overlapping groups here. Let's inspect them one at a time. The first large group represents the value B. You can see that wherever there's a 1, input B is 1. And these 1s are independent of input A and input C. So that's it, B. In the case of the second group, you can see that where there's a 1, input A is 1. So this second group represents A. But look more closely and you can see for this group of 1s, input C is 0. So these ones also represent not C. And there's our final expression, B or A and not C. Very much simpler than what we started with. Let's look at another example, but this time we're going to use a truth table. You might find that this is an easier approach. I'm going to start with the first part of the expression again. And what I'm looking for are rows in the truth table where A is 1 and B is 1. There are two such rows here, so these two rows represent A and B. I can populate the output column. Looking at the next part of the expression, I'm looking for rows in the truth table where A is 1 and C is 1. Again, there are two such rows. These rows represent A and C. And I can populate the output column for these rows. It so happens I already had a 1 in the bottom row. The next part of the expression, I'm looking for rows where B is 1 and C is 0, because we have not C this time. There are two such rows, and I can populate their output columns. And then finally, the last part of the expression, I'm looking for rows where A is 1, B is 1, and C is 0. There's only one such row, so I populate its output column. And that's it. My truth table is complete. All I need to do now is pop zeros in where there aren't ones, and I can transfer this across onto my K-map. 
OK, let's inspect the K-map and see what groupings we have. You can see we've got two groups of 1 here. This group of 1s always corresponds to a value of B equals 1. They also always correspond to a value of C is 0. So we have B and not C. With the second group of 1s, we can see that they always correspond to a value of A. Furthermore, they always correspond to a value of C. So this group is A and C. And that gives us our final simplified expression. B and not C, or A and C. Let's look at a final example, but this time with four variables. I'm going to work my way through it in exactly the same way as I did before, and I'm using a truth table. The first part of the expression, I'm looking for rows where A is 0, B is 1, C is 0, and D is 1. There is only one row, so I populate the output column with a 1. And I might as well put that straight into the K-map. In the next part of the expression, I'm looking for rows where A is 0 and the other inputs are 1. There's only one such row, and there it is. And again, I can populate the K-map directly. In the third part of the expression, I'm looking for rows where A, B and D are 1 and C is 0. There it is. Populate the output column and I can write the result directly into my K-map. And then finally, I'm looking for rows where B, C and D are 1. There are two such rows this time. I populate their output columns and I can write that directly into my K-map. My truth table and my K-map are now complete. So what simplified expression can I derive? I've got one group of 1s here, and I can see that they always correspond to a value of 1 for input B. I can also see that they always correspond to a value of 1 for input D. So this expression is simply B and D.